want one of them to go after the jig. Missed him. Just barely bit on it. There we go. Look at that! <laughs> hey, we're out here on a beautiful Uligal Lake. When uh, it's winter time, it's kind of hard to tell it's winter time right now. It's uh, about 55, 60 degrees outside. Water temp's about 42 degrees, but. This is wintertime crappie fishing. It's going to get back to normal tomorrow. But uh, showed up on Uligaw today just simply because there's a lot of schooling fish. They're, they're just schooled up there. Um, some of them are on structure. Some of them are just roaming. And uh, we're going to spend the day trying to catch some of them, maybe target some little bit better fish. Uh, better fish today, we're talking probably a pound and a quarter, maybe a pound and a half. So let's, uh, let's get around here and see what we can do. I thought I'd take a second and talk to you a little bit about how to recognize what is and what isn't a crappie. So I'm zoomed out, we're, we're at 60 foot right now and, and we see a couple fish out here and I'm, I'm just gonna chase them for a second um, and let you see something. So at 60 foot, this grid is five foot by two foot. You can see 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and it's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 down the left side. So that's the size of that grid. It's a two foot by five foot grid. Um, and we saw these two fish. And here they look about the same size as what we've been fishing for, except for when you look at the grid, you can tell that this fish is three foot long, maybe a little bit longer. Um, so obviously that's not a crappie. I don't think they're making three foot long crappie yet. Um, so I'm going to zoom in and as we zoom in, we get here to the 40 foot range. You can see that now the grid has went to two foot by four foot. So now as we're pulling up on this tree, we're seeing lots of crappie, but you can see that that two foot grid is not occupying even a quarter of it. You know, a quarter of two foot is six inches, so those are less than six inch long crappie. Um, probably not something I want to target. So zoomed out, I can see that there's some trees here. There's a fish on the back side of that tree. I'm going to zoom in. 30 foot is my good range that I can really tell what, what that fish is. So at 30 foot, I'm beginning to isolate some small fish in the front and then some better fish on this back side of the tree. So you can see that those are a little bit better. Um, they're occupying about half of that grid, so they're about a 12 inch long crappie. Um, really simple process. I encourage everybody to turn their grids on and, and use them because that, for me, helps me size those fish. Uh, and, I, and in tournament fishing especially, saves a lot of time. Surely out of one of these. So I'm looking, you know, there's some small fish, a little bit bigger, another little bit bigger fish there. Obviously I'm trying to target just a little bit bigger fish. And I always try to start at the top one because I want to, I want to be able to fish to the entire pile. If you looked, my jig disappeared, and that was why. So that's one of the downfalls of what I'm doing. I'm fishing a 3 8 weight above a 32nd ounce jig. As you can see as it's falling, that it inverts there. But this is probably the biggest fish in the pile. Oh, he, he went to my weight, wanted to eat it. He quit on me. I want one of them to go after the jig. Missed him. Just barely bit on it. There we go.
this is a nice pound type of crappie, but um, we're going to let them go today. We're just out here enjoying our time. So guys, we're going to drop these rear facing trolling motors. Um, what they are for us is brakes. Um, I've got them rigged up with a momentary switch back there. And we just point them, they're, they're pointed in reverse. So that uh, every time that I need control of the boat, they're, they're brakes. And, and when we step on that, they just, I've got them set on three right now. That just uh, stops the boat from that going forward. Wow, what a school of shad just moved in on us. Giving them just a second to clear out. Keeping my bait up above all these fish, completely out of the picture. Now that they're gone, same place we were. I'm gonna lower it right back down in there. And there's a little bitty guy. But out here using this uh, a long rod fishing these deep piles, this is a, a Falcon 13. It's in the slab series. What I really, really like about them is the backbone that these rods have. It uh, can't tell it with, you know, these are pound fish, but the backbone that is in these rods is really incredible. And for what I do, it's really important. Um, I know there's other poles out there that they're really soft tips. They bend a lot. Um, and yeah, you can lift a two pound fish, but man, you struggle. Um, and tournament fishing like I do, it's so important that we're able to get those fish in, um, get them weighed, get them either in the live well or back in the water so that they're not stressed out. Um, and, and the backbone that's in this pole is just amazing. They also have a 15 footer. That 15 footer is uh, basically the same backbone. It's a little bit heavier, therefore I fish with the 13 when I don't have to have the extra length. And the reasons that I need those extra lengths is that, um, say we're fishing a little bit deeper or the wind's blowing a little bit more or there's current or something, so that I am pushing the, the jig out a little bit further away from the boat. All right, so we picked up another one off there. Feel like another decent fish. So to, today we're, uh, since we're fishing, you guys can see it's 30 foot of water. We're fishing 15 foot deep. Um, a little bit smaller, that's only 11 inch fish, probably three quarters of a pound. So what I've ended up doing is going to a, a 3 8 ounce egg sinker that I've pegged. It'll float up and down the line, but I peg it in place with just a, a, a bobber stop, running at about 8 to 10 inches above a 32nd ounce hair jig. So guys, where we were fishing, um, I guess everybody's found out about it. it, it uh, it's not like it's a secret, but um, we, we had a bunch of anglers around us and I just wanted to, to get away from them and thought we could duplicate that almost anywhere on the lake. So what we've done is we've just moved out. Um, I use my maps a lot. So where we were fishing was up here along a bluff. You can actually see the bluff up there. Um, and so this entire bluff up there, I feel like should hold fish. We haven't checked all of it yet, but I ran down to the mouth of a creek. Um, same deal, it's real steep, kind of bluffy going into this. And just we're, what we're looking for today is, is fish that are, they're really schooled up. They're, they're in schools, you know, 50 to 100 type fish at a time, but they're relating the structure today. Swapped rods on you this time. Um, grabbed one little short rod. Um, they weren't wanting to respond very well. So basically what I'm doing is, is as I'm bringing that jig through, the fish become oriented flat in, in the water. So if this is his nose, um, and I'm bringing that jig across him, when I see him turn up, that means that he's seen it. So when he sees the jig, then I make the jig react to what he's doing. So if he, if he starts to swim towards it, then I'm gonna pull the jig away. Um, if I cast over there and he stays flat and it just drifts right by his head and he doesn't react, then I need to do something different. So a lot of times I'll bring that jig in 
whether it be from the front or the back, it'll come down right in front of them and I pop it, I twitch it. It'll jump about three or four inches in the water and then I'll begin to see him orient his body so that uh, it's just an indicator that tells me what he's thinking and it tells me that he saw it. Can't make them bite, but you can sure get their interest. <laughs>